Welcome back to the videos, guys. Today, we are doing the first section of the Mega Squirt 2 ECU install. And hopefully it goes well. Um, I'm going to try and do this as best I can, step by step. This might end up being two videos. Probably just one, hopefully. Um, probably just one install video. We'll probably end up doing a separate video for the computer side of things. I'm not very good at that, so it'll be a learning process for us all. I hope you guys love my lovely ice chest table here. What we're gonna do is take everything out of here, especially the receipt for O'Reilly's, and we're gonna lay this harness out and uh, kind of get everything spread so we know exactly what goes where and then we'll start running everything through. So this is going to be our main relay box along with our fuse. I believe there's a 100 or 120 amp fuse in there. Um, this is going to be set pretty close to the battery. Uh, we've got our ECU itself. This I'm going to do my best to mount back in the factory spot, the driver's side kick well. And then these are going to be all of our injector clips and so on and so forth. So I got most of the loom ran already. We've got it running across there. Everything goes inside. These are all labeled, so it's pretty simple, really easy to do. You got your intake air temp sensor, your TPS throttle position sensor, your CAS cranked angle sensor, and then all of your coil pack plugs will be right here and then all your fuel injector plugs are labeled as well there's that junction box and we will go inside and i will show you what we're working with in here so we've got these that'll run to our fuel pump and then that silver connector is for your ecu your mega squirt ecu you do have to take that connector apart. There is two screws on it, and then this piece comes off and allows you to push it through the firewall. And then you also get a vacuum line that runs into the ECU directly to your map sensor, which is your, your manifold absolute pressure. So um, other than that, that's about where we're at. I still have to mount up the ECU. Um, I'm going to do that right now, and then we will run the wiring for the fuel pump, and I'll show you kind of where I've run that. So for the fuel pump wire, I ended up running it through that pillar and was able to fish it all the way down, and that'll run back to the fuel pump. This is going to be our ground wire for the fuel pump. As you can see, if it'll focus, probably not. Anywho, we need to find a good grounding spot for this wire, and then that'll be taken care of. ECU is hooked up. I need to maneuver it into the best possible spot for mounting it, and then take care of the fuel pump side. And I need to make sure that when we do mount the ECU, we can actually get our tuning cable into the ECU. Okay, this is the morning after. We did end up getting the ECU mounted. I'm gonna show you. I tried to keep it as close to the factory spot as possible. I'm gonna flip you around. As you can see right there, that's about as close as I could get it without putting too much strain on the plug that actually goes in the back. Then we still have access to our plugs for tuning. This still has to be taken care of, and then I also have my wideband gauge. I have to get wired up. I believe that white is the 0 volt to 5 volt output, and that'll just allow the ECU to see what's actually going on with our, uh, our O2 sensor, our wideband gauge, and it can adjust AFRs from there. Um... I think I showed you everything up front. Everything's pretty much hooked up. 
it's all pretty pretty well labeled these are all of our ignition plugs i can't hook any of that up until i get the mounting bracket for the ls1 coil back sorry ls3 coil packs um the only thing really you have to do to get this kit to work is tap that plug for your intake air temp and then also hook up a water temp sensor those are really easy to do the water temp sensor threads right in like it's supposed to be there and then i tapped the intake air temp sensor myself and it's pretty tight pretty snug in there um i need to get a couple more vacuum lines one to run to our afr gauge that way we can see boost on that as well we'll be able to see it from the ecu this is the vacuum line for our map sensor that goes straight to the ecu and um, that'll be pretty much good to go i need to find a way to to tuck it make it look nice and pretty and then i have to get I believe this is our negative tack reference, so that'll also hook up to the ECU. That way our tack gauge still works. I do need to run a couple lines up here, one from our coolant neck up to the thermostat housing. On your stock setup, that goes to a little block that sits on top of the intake manifold. I think that's just for uh, heating purposes to warm up the car but we're not going to be using that. So I figured it would be fine to just cross it over and make sure it's out of the way. And that's what this is for. So just for reference, I'm gonna show you, it's that nipple all the way up to the one on the thermostat housing. I'm going to trim this down, obviously. I'm not gonna leave it like this. I just wanted to show you guys the idea of what's going to be happening. So I think this is probably about how I'm gonna run it. Have it come up to the hard lines. I'll tie it up here in two spots. And then our intercooler piping will slip right through there just to kind of keep it from kinking. I tried to run it just right here and it's too much of an angle and it, it doesn't seem like it would get good flow. So I'll obviously clean it up more once the intake pipe is there and I can actually see what needs to be done. But for the time being, that's just where it's going to sit. So for a brief overview, what we've done is we've installed the harness. We've installed the ECU. We've ran the line for the fuel pump. And I still need to do the ground for that as well. There are two grounds on the harness I still need to do. Um, our intake air temp sense is plugged in and ready to go. Our throttle position sensor is plugged in, ready to go. And then our water temp sensor is plugged in, ready to go. Still have the coil packs to do. And to wire up the AFR gauge and the tack sense. So other than that, the ECU itself is ready to go. We got the block. We've got our fuse block right there, right next to the battery. We do have one cable that will go straight to the positive terminal of the battery that I have set off to the side. And then we can clean up the wiring a little bit, but the hardest parts are done. I do need to find some sort of solution for the PCV kind of intake that's right there. I do need to plug off the PCV valve itself because we will no longer be using those. If any of you know of a filter that can go over something that big, like a little cone filter, drop a comment down below, let me know, give you a shout out in the next video. Um, as far as today goes, that's probably where I'm going to end it. We've got a lot done. There's a couple things that still need to be done, but most of it is done. The hardest stuff is done. So I guess this will end up being two videos. The next one will probably be a lot easier to follow. Um, if you have any suggestions, if there's anything specific you want to see, something you don't know, or you're doing a mega squirt and you want to have, uh, more ideas thrown to you, or you need a solution, by all means, leave a comment down below. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, 
I will catch you next time. Peace.